Hello, I'm Ron Huber. I'm a volunteer at the Science Museum since 1964. Yeah, in uh, the summer of 1964, I was identifying tiger beetles for the University of Minnesota, and I asked them if they knew of any other collections that might have tiger beetles nearby. And they said, well, there's a children's museum in St. Paul. So they gave me the name and number, and I called Philip S. Taylor, the director, and he's very cordial. He invited me over to his house in Marina on St. Croix, and I identified a couple tiger beetles for him, and then went through, and I just started arranging them by species, kind of curating, so to speak. And he really enjoyed that, thanked me for that, said that they could really use somebody like me volunteering at the museum if I'd like to come over. And I said, well, I'm, I'm employed full time, but I'm off on Saturdays. I could come in then. And he said, that would be great. So in October of 64, I came in here and started working. We had two of those brown cabinets of, of insects, and I just started working on the collection, building it. And, uh, and ultimately, you know, the situation was financially not getting enough support from the state. And so I just came in on my own and called it the OOPS system, out of pocket system, O-O-P-S. And um, one time I was talking with my grandma and she said, you go all over the state collecting bugs for them? Do you get paid for that? And I said, no. And she'd been through the depression. She said, well, then why do you do it? I said, because I really enjoy it. End of discussion. Grandma didn't have anything else to say after that. But, but uh, one of my earliest ones here, I was up in northern Minnesota and I collected a little brown butterfly. I thought, oh, what is this thing? And I brought it home and mounted it up and brought it over here. It's called a red disc alpine. There was one U.S. record, 1936, Itasca State Park. And I thought, I just got the second U.S. record. That's kind of neat. And then a little orange butterfly came by that I'd never seen. I grabbed that and, boy, I don't know what this one is. And so I took it home, mounted it up, brought it in here. I said, okay, it looks like it's the you know, Freya fritillary. And so I thought, boy, there's nothing like that around here. So I sent a letter. This was before email, of course. So I sent a letter off to an expert out in Maine. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, you're 450 miles too far south for a Freya. I said, oh. So I took it in the lab over there and I photographed the upper side and underside here and I sent him the pictures. About a week later, I got a thing in the mail and said, oh my God, it's 450 miles further south than anybody ever knew it. And so I published a note on that too. And between the Red Disc Alpine and the Freya Fritillary, collectors from Wisconsin and Michigan and Iowa started coming up to, you know, where I'd found these things. They were all excited wanting to find the things too. The thrill of discovery, I think, is what really kind of stands out when you come across things like that. But my wife and I met because she was interested in butterflies. She had a garden in the back and she was an artist and going to art school and raised her own vegetables to feed herself and got by on a very, very strict budget but she noticed some larvae eating some of her vegetables and she wondered what those were. So she reared them through and they turned out to be butterflies, you know, swallowtails and so on. And she got kind of interested in butterflies and she joined the Lepidoptera Society, which is a national thing. And every time we get an issue, there'd be new members. And I always look for new people in Minnesota so we could contact them and tell them that we have a kind of a local group here that goes out on weekends collecting. And, so I called her up and invited her to come to our next monthly meeting, which she did. And she was kind of excited to listen to all the talks about the butterflies and stuff. And, and I told her, you know, we plan our weekends. There were like four or five of us fill up a carload, sometimes two carloads if we're going to a neat place. And so she joined us on field trips. And, and uh, ultimately she wanted to come in here and volunteer at the museum. She came in and she is an artist and has a good eye and she can mount butterflies so much better than I can. <laughs> and she'd you know, do a perfect job of mounting and write labels with a little rapidograph pen. And, and she really helped to bolster adding stuff to the collection here. Plus, a lot of the things she collected were duplicates and she put some in the collection too. So anyway, it's been a really wonderful learning experience coming in here all these years and just building this collection and building this collection begging on my hands and knees for new cabinets and drawers. To, you know, and 
And when you stop growing, you essentially you're dead. I mean, it, you got to just keep adding stuff. And it's only an estimate, but I think I brought in 15,000 specimens, possibly more. But being associated with, you know, really like-minded people here, people had a lot of expertise, people who were into research and collecting and publishing. I mean, everything was just so motivating for me that, you know, the highlight of my week was to come in here and work on the collection and maybe write up a little manuscript on something we discovered. And, and, uh, and you know, and then of course at lunchtime, you know, we said we'd share discoveries back and forth with they were finding out in the field and what I was finding and just, yeah, it was yeah, really motivating. Just, yeah, yeah, it's, I think, you know, coming in here and doing this stuff is what's kept me going for 57 years. And I don't know how many more I've got, but I'm, I'm gonna keep her going. <laughs> Thank you for watching this and visit smm.org for more discoveries.